Hi, Harrison here. One of the most common questions I get from students is how often do you have to change strings and what to buy? Uh, that's a personal thing. So any guitar player that's going out playing shows and things will probably change strings every night for each show. Uh, now that gets expensive. For me, uh, teaching and all of the other work I do, if it's a guitar that I'm not playing that much and it's in its case out of the way and not getting dusty, I can get a couple of months out of a set of strings. If it's a guitar that I'm using every day or regularly, um, anywhere between four and six weeks probably. My acoustic guitar strings last a little bit longer than that and my bass strings last months. So what I say to students is always, as soon as they start to feel less polished and smooth like new strings do and as soon as they start to look uh, tarnished and start getting a little bit black times change your strings and eventually you'll learn to hear when your strings sound dull right so there are a couple of things before you buy any new strings that's going to make your life a lot easier one is a string winder it makes it much faster changing your strings and the planet waves one has a string uh, cutting tool in the handle which is really useful as well the other thing that will make your strings last much longer is just wiping the grease and dirt and sweat off them after every time you play with the clean cloth and then something like either fast fret or the Dunlop string cleaner. Um, I It takes me ages to get through a bottle of this stuff but I think I can probably make my strings last half as long again uh, just by cleaning them off after every time I play. So there are three things to consider when you're buying guitar strings. The gauge of the string, which is the thickness of each string, the material they're made from and whether they're coated, and the manufacturer. Starting with the most important of those, which is string gauge. If you walk into any music shop in the country and ask for a set of electric guitar strings, they'll probably sell you a set of nines if it's a Fender style guitar, and tens if it's a Gibson star guitar. And that's a great starting point for students. So what do those numbers mean? A set of nines just means the highest string, the top E string, is 0.009 inches thick. So strings tend to come in standard uh, sets, although the front of the box will tell you the thickness of each of the six strings involved. Nines for a Fender and tens for a Gibson Les Paul are a really good student set until you're experienced enough to know and to want to try and experiment with heavier gauges. Lighter strings are easier to hold down, they're easier to bend on an electric guitar, uh, although thicker strings do definitely have more volume and a, a thicker and a different tone to them. So it's definitely worth experimenting if you've been playing for a few months. Material is an interesting one. So almost all strings have a steel core but uh, different manufacturers use different metals on the windings of the lower strings. So most guitars are nickel based. Uh, stainless steel strings are also really common and how the strings are made affect how bright or warm that guitar string sounds. And again, this is a personal preference thing that I urge anybody to experiment with until you find something that works really well for you. In terms of manufacturer, uh, there's not enough time to talk about all of them in this video, but please uh, ignore really cheap strings. Stick to the recognised brands. Elixir, Deodario, Rotosound, Ernie Ball. Uh, they're all going to give you a quality string that won't break and it'll sound relatively good. In terms of what I use, I've been using Elixir strings for my electrics for years now. I really like their nano web coating, I like their octa web coating as well. Uh, I just think they sound great and they're really reliable. Having said that, various people that I've uh, spoken to that I really trust on this subject have told me that I should try some Kurt Mangan strings and I really wanted to support the pedal show guys as well. They spent a lot of time uh, experimenting with string gauges and put together some custom gauge string sets. Um, so I've got one of each for my Telecaster and my Strat and perhaps in a video or a blog post later on uh, we'll do some sound comparisons between the elixirs that I'm really used to and see how I got on with the Kurt Mangans. 
but if you've been with a string company that you like for a while now and you just want to change I thoroughly recommend having a go at those. I use Elixirs on all of my acoustics as well. These are their 8020s um, which I use on some of my guitars although I personally prefer their phosphor block bronze sets. Um, their 12 to 53 light sets for me are a sort of great all-rounder. Um, I've tried heavier and lighter but the fact that they make everything easier to play but they can still deal with drop tunings like Dadgad uh, means they're pretty much essential for me. For classical guitar, uh, Diodario strings work great and it has to be said they're about a third of the price of my Savaro strings but this was what was recommended to me by the guy that built my Papalado classical guitar and I've always stuck to them on that guitar and just think they sound great. Um, I get through a set of classical strings every four weeks or so, even with cleaning. Uh, but yeah, Savaris is what I recommend for everybody. I couldn't do a video on strings without talking about my DR Neons. Now, yes, I bought them for this bass just because I look, think they look cool. Uh, and they do glow in the dark, so they look great on stage under lights. Um, but they actually sound great as well. I was on uh, Rotosound medium gauge stainless steel strings for their bright sound for years, and then Tomastic flat rounds for my precision bass and for my fretlesses. Um, and Tomastic great, make great double bass strings as well. But I tried these out just because I wanted something different and because I thought they looked cool and was really impressed on how the DR sounded. So I definitely recommend DRs to all of my students for bass. I really hope that's been useful. Please remember if you've been playing for a while and you want to experiment with a heavier string gauge, it's well worth getting your guitar set up for that specific string gauge by a tech that knows what they're doing. If you have any questions about guitar strings, please leave them in the comments below and look out for more videos we do.